I don't normally do this, but ever since COVID-19, my family and I, we've been taking the task of cleaning our homes much more seriously. And I know I'm not the only one. According to Singapore's largest supermarket chain FairPrice, demand for cleaning products surged by up to 70% between February and June compared to the same period last year. Popular items include household cleaning agents that claim to kill 99.9% .9 of germs or have antibacterial or antiviral properties, disinfectant sprays and alcohol wipes. In this episode, I want to find out if all this additional cleaning is actually making my home safe from dangerous bacteria and viruses. To find out, I'm meeting with three families who have stepped up their cleaning routines since COVID-19 broke out. First up, Sheila. Her eldest son, Sharin, is obsessed with cleaning spending up to two hours every single day cleaning his home. Have you had to make extra efforts to clean the house since the pandemic? I'm very particular, so clean is important. The virus is like quite dangerous nowadays, very harmful to us, so we are taking extra steps. Is there a particular area in the house that you are more concerned about? For me, everything. Uh. <laughs> so, <laughs> I cannot do one, I can't do, I need to do everything. Next, Daphne Neal, a stay-home mom. She's been cleaning her home up to three times a week, compared to just once a week before the COVID-19 pandemic. Which places in your household do you focus on a bit more to protect the children? I would say the living room and dining room area, because dining room is the area that we eat. And for the living room areas is where we sit down and watch TV. And finally, meet Kenneth Tan. He doesn't clean his house as often, but he makes up for it by using antibacterial cleaning products. Are you spending more on cleaning products? Yes, at least $100 more per month. Wow, that's quite a fair bit. Yes. Do you think it has been worth it? I should say yes. Um, Daniel, let me show you my cleaning products over here, which I've actually got it for my own hygiene purposes. It's all here. Woohoo! It's a full rack of it. Yeah, oh my goodness. exactly. And the most critical ones is this disinfectant spray, which I uh, just got it recently. So whenever when I come back, you know, from anywhere, I'll disinfect the whole house. Okay, just pssst, like yeah, that. Yeah, correct. And it's actually order free. Full marks for effort. The families have really stepped up on cleaning. But are their homes as clean as they think it is? To help me find out, I've assembled a team of experts. With four years of experience under its belt, Clean Lab has seen the grimiest of spaces and scrubbed them squeaky clean. Leading the cleaning team is Jocelyn Xiao. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the cleaners, how many points would you give yourself, Sharif? Um, 8. Wow, that's very high, 8 upon 10. And Sheila? I give myself 6. I would say about eight points. <laughs> Woohoo! That's very, very confident. I should say eight. Eight? Yeah. I'm okay. going to bring in some cleaning experts and they will assess how clean your home really is. Sure. We're starting with the ATP test. ATP is present in all living organisms. So, the test can quickly reveal if a surface is contaminated with things like dirt, soil, food debris and bacteria. We are swabbing two common areas, the dining tables and the toilet door knobs. The results are almost immediate. Okay, Jocelyn has got the preliminary results and she is ready to share them with you. If let's say you were to get a number below 500 counts, it will be passable. If the number lies between 500 to 1000 count, then you will have to be cautioned and you also have to take some actions to it. And if the numbers actually pass 1000 count, you will actually have to engage someone to do a disinfection service for you. The results are... The toilet doorknob, the count is at... 6,045 count. Dude, you're off the charts, man! 
Which part of the toilet is the dirtiest? Normally, it would be the most dirtiest at the commonly high-touch surfaces. For example, your doorknobs, your sink, your toilet bowl covers. All this will be places whereby bacteria, germs and viruses will normally spawn at. So you got clean those areas or not? The toilet bowl, the sink I got clean, but then the door I never. Yeah, because people normally miss it out. For the dining table count, your count is currently at 3,620. What? Oh, from 6,000, I feel like I must clap. <laughs> Jocelyn, are these numbers normal? These numbers are certainly not normal. Reason being, we do see these numbers. However, it's normally found at places such as hawker centres, offices, but residential rarely. How do you feel about this? You're comparing with the hawker centre. So I know that my cleaning part is definitely better than hawker centre. You don't get it. You don't understand <laughs> yeah. why you have tried so hard you are seeing these results. Let's wait for the tests yes. uh, from the lab, which will tell us a little bit more. Jocelyn's cleaning team will also be taking swab samples around all three homes to test for bacteria that cause a range of infections like pneumonia. We'll also be checking for any traces of COVID-19. Next up, stay-at-home mom Daphne. Jocelyn, over to you for the preliminary results. I'll first um, reveal the toilet knobs. The count is currently at 477 count. Congratulations. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> she said congratulations. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> you look like, you know, your, your, your child just got four A stars for PSLE. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they're so clean. <laughs> Do you clean your door knobs? Yes. That's great, which is the reason the results is good. You win already like this. <laughs> Okay, next, what about the dining table? We have also conducted the ATP test for the dining table and the count currently is at 1,545 oh. counts. <laughs> Your dining table has actually scored dirtier compared to the toilet. Does that surprise you? Yes, because um, I did clean it very clean with the disinfectant and in fact, it's a dining area which we always eat, so it shouldn't be so high. Both Sheila and Daphne's dining tables had dangerous levels of bacteria count, while Sheila's toilet door handle had bacterial counts that was off the charts. Now, what about Kenneth, who spends about $100 a month on supercharged cleaning products? Does that make his home the cleanest? OK, uh, process, process. Yeah. yeah. What was the reaction? Very shocked. But the important question is... Was COVID-19 found in any of the households? I'm investigating just how clean our homes are, even as we step up on our cleaning regime amid the COVID-19 pandemic. To help me, I've enlisted three households. Together with a crack team of cleaning experts, we are giving these homes a thorough inspection to find out if they harbour any deadly germs. We're left with Kenneth. He's been cleaning even the tightest spots at home to ensure they are grime-free. And he's confident about getting an amazing scorecard. Let's start with the, 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 the bathroom sure. door results. Okay. <laughs> Your toilet doorknob is currently at the count of 779. Which is caution. Yes, you might have to do something about it. The dining table. Diana, let me tell you what, you will be shocked because for the dining table, the count is at 947. Oh, well, that's almost bridging the 1,000 score. Yes, and above 1,000, it's like immediately now you should do a disinfection service. Okay, uh, process, process. Yeah. yeah, what was your reaction? My reaction is very shocked. You know, I'm actually in a shocking state right now because I, I clean and sanitize every time after each meal. Or even without having a meal here, I still clean it thoroughly, you know. The reading for the dining table is pretty high and that's before you even send the samples to the laboratory for yeah. tests. Is he in for a bigger shock? 
I believe he might be. Reason being on our side, uh, although we are taking the counts for the bacteria, the germs and the dirt, but when it's brought to the laboratory, the results will definitely differ a bit and laboratory results will definitely be much, much more accurate. The team also did a lab test that will look out for specific strains of bacteria. They've taken samples from four areas. Light switches, remote controls, sofas and the door knob for the main door. We're looking out for dangerous germs that can only be detected under laboratory conditions, such as those that can lead to diarrhea and pneumonia, as well as the dreaded COVID-19. Two weeks later, the results are in. I've invited the three families to join me at the lab for the reveal. Sheila, whose son cleans obsessively, stay-at-home mum Daphne, and Kenneth, who lives with his elderly mum. Joining us is Ang Min Xuan, the man behind the lab test. So, the only person here who knows which is the dirtiest house is Ming Xuan. Please let us know. So, the dirtiest house is... Sheila. <laughs> Sheila! In what sense is it the dirtiest house? Out of the four points we detected, all four sorts to have uh, bacteria counts. Kenneth House is the in-between one where we detected three out of four sites that has bacterial growth and the cleanest house is Stephanie's. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Sheila, how do you feel? Your son worked so hard to clean the house. I was actually surprised because he was the one who actually being very particular about cleanliness in the house. Which part of Sheila's house was the most worrying for you? According to the results, the main doorknob was registered with the highest count for yeast and mold and with some cow in the total bacteria. That part was the part that um, we didn't concentrate on cleaning. What other issues did you pick up from the other houses? For Kenneth... Oh, OK. <laughs> I'm so worried. But at the same time, I'm excited as well. <laughs> OK, no, no, no. drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. So actually, the point of concern is your TV remote control. You. Yes, where it registered the highest total bacteria count. Does that surprise you, Kenneth? Yeah, it's very surprising because I never thought of cleaning the remote control and I'm actually afraid of cleaning it. It's just worried that water droplets might actually drop in and spoil the remote ah, control. Ah, I see. Daphne, yours is the cleanest house. So, in regards to the bacteria count, the detected site was the sofa handle where it detects the bacteria and also the yeast and mold. And for the rest of the three other areas, it registered none. Wow, none. Oh. How you clean? Uh? I also want to know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I use uh, antibacterial products as well as uh, this infection. The all-important question, was COVID-19 found in any of the households? I'm pleased to announce that there's none detected in all three of the houses. <laughs> if not, I also, gonna, I also went to your house. <laughs> what was the most common germs found in all three households? According to the result, we detected yeast and mold in all three of the houses. The most prevalent was in the sofa and those. Yeast and mold actually is prevalent in Singapore due to the hot, humid weather conditions. Usually, they will cause respiratory problems in humans and we might also cause some skin allergies. In fact, let me show you the samples for the yeast and mold that was sought from each of the houses. That is nasty. So despite using disinfecting products that claim to kill 99.9% .9 of germs, all three households still have relatively high bacterial and dirt counts on common touch points. Yeast and mould was also detected. So this makes me wonder, are supercharged cleaning products not doing its work? For some answers, I've arranged to meet Dr. Bintu Ahijo. Hello, Dr. Bintu. Hi, She's a microbiologist at the National University of Singapore's Yong Lu Lin School of Medicine. Dr. Bintu, the houses have been cleaned and some of the houses cleaned many times, but there were bacteria found in all of the houses. Can you contextualize the results for me, please? So that is not um, unexpected, right? Because every human being sheds about 800 million bacteria and about 150 million fungi a day, right? Then it depends then how, on how many people live in the household. 
If you have pets, they also shed. Basically anything that you have that's living in your house will shed microorganisms. If you go to the grocery store, for example, and you bring back produce, these also have microorganisms that you're introducing into your house. But again, it's important to remember that not all of these are bad, and some of these are actually quite good and useful for us as humans. How do we know whether there's a good balance between good and bad bacteria? Only when you fall sick, I'm afraid. <laughs> when you fall sick, it means there's something out of sync, right? So out of balance. When I was in the households, I saw an array of cleaning products. Some claim to kill 99.9% .9 of germs. So like a cleaning product that say they kill 99.9% .9 usually contain chemicals such as chlorine or triclosan, for example, that are known to be effective killers, if you will, of microorganisms. And usually most disinfectants will never tell you that they kill at 100%, right? Which means then that you don't end up removing all of these microorganisms. Does how we clean matter? Yes, it does. If you don't use the proper technique or the proper tools, then you end up with a lot more microorganisms that are left on the surface. Cleaning products that claim to kill 99.9% .9 of germs can help but they don't guarantee that your home will be germ-free unless you change the way you clean. I'm going to find out how to do just that. When you are wiping just now, you are actually just pushing the dirt from left to right. I'm totally guilty of wiping in circular motion. I've discovered that germs can continue to lurk in our homes even if we are obsessive about cleaning. So could we actually be cleaning wrongly? For some answers, I'm meeting Jocelyn from Clean Lab again. We've arranged to meet at Sheila's house. Hello, Sheila. We are back. Hi, Sheila. Her home was found to have the highest dirt and bacterial count on the dining table and bathroom door handle when our cleaning team swooped in last week. Traces of bacteria, along with yeast and mould, were also detected in the lab test. Jocelyn is going to show us just how we should be cleaning. So, um, Jocelyn is back here today Hi. and she will be sharing with us how to properly clean the house. Sheila, how about you show us how you normally clean a dining table? Okay, normally I just use a normal uh, wet tissue. Uh, just wipe on the surface. And this is what yes. you do after a meal or...? And before as well. Mm. Yeah. Jocelyn, is that sufficient? That's definitely not sufficient because you have only just did the pre-clean whereby you actually wipe away the surface soil and dirt. So technically, when you are wiping just now, you are actually just pushing the dirt from left to right. So that means it's totally not clean. <laughs> Okay, so Sheila, previously you just did the pre-clean. Mm -hmm. Let me show you how to do the disinfecting process. So just now when you are cleaning, you are actually doing it on a circular motion. But actually that's not what we recommend. We always recommend clients to do on a sweeping motion, which means that you only go one direction. So you don't push the soil and dirt left and right. And then once you are done with single surface, you also change to the other side. Instead of allowing the soil and dirt back to the surface, and same thing, do another round of sweeping process. So this antimicrobial disinfectant, you actually have to leave it on the surface area for a bit of time so that it can bind with the surface area and therefore, you know, be effective against all the germs and the bacteria. Based on different disinfectant, they have various contact time. But leaving it for 10 minutes will be more than sufficient for most of the disinfectant out there. So there are three steps to cleaning. First, a pre-clean, then disinfect, and then another quick wipe down to get rid of all the dead germs. I have to say I'm totally guilty of wiping in circular motions. But Jocelyn, my question is, how often do we have to do this three-step cleaning process? During this pandemic period, right, we actually recommend clients to do it at least three to four times a week for common high-touch surfaces. For example, your doorknobs, your fridge, your toilet area, your chairs. And for non-high-touch surfaces, we recommend you guys to do it at least one to two times per week. So it turns out that how I clean my house actually matters. 
Armed with this new knowledge, I now know how to make my house as germ-free as possible. But now that we are in phase two and we're spending more time outside, are we bringing more germs back home? Since COVID-19 broke out, we've become hyper-aware of the things we touch. Thank you. You know, should I be disinfecting my delivery? And what about the groceries that I bring home? I know just the person to help me. Microbiologist Dr. Yo Wee Ming has been spending the past 15 years trying to find out the best way to keep surfaces germ-free. Should I sanitize my grocery bag to begin with? Yes, I mean grocery bags are quite dirty. Research has shown that the grocery bag can carry a lot of germs. The best way to sanitize a grocery bag is probably you just want to laundry it, use a detergent or a disinfectant every couple of days or depend on how frequent you go shopping. I also got something else. Uh, there it is. See, this is what aunties do. Ah. We take the supermarket bag and then we fold, fold, fold and then there's a container of it. Mm. So my question is, before I use these plastic bags, um, do I need to sanitize them? These bags, I don't know whether you are aware, when you are in the shopping centre, they come in one stack yes. where they produce directly from the manufacturer, right, straight from the factory. So the chances of each individual layer being contaminated, like I say again, is even lower than having a lightning strike. Mm. And the only person who touched this bag, other than you yourself, would be the cashier. So if you're worried or concerned, you might just want to clean up the handle where you hold the bag. And the most important thing is you clean the bottom of the bag. Mm. Yeah, because that's where you put it around as you are shopping. But other than that, the bags, I think they are much safer than all the individual items that's in your grocery bag. I've discovered that no matter how much we clean, our homes will still be a hotbed for germs like bacteria, yeast and mould. Of course, cleaning products with disinfecting properties can help, but it's also about how I clean. So use different cloths for different surfaces and instead of doing this, circular motions, I should be wiping from side to side. Then disinfect. Can't wipe them off as soon as I spray them. I gotta make sure to leave them on for at least 10 minutes before I wipe it off with water. It is a bit more work, but in times of a pandemic, I am not taking any chances.